This painting, Blue Green Scribbles, was made with a variety of natural media variants that I put into a custom palette, which you'll open now. Let's go to the custom palette organizer, import from our working files, chapter one folder, scribbler natural.pal. That PAL indicates that this is a custom palette file. So I'll open that and I will dismiss the panel and move this over. So each of these variants comes from a different category, 15 categories that I consider to be the natural media emulation brushes. And you will have an opportunity to create something as good as this by simply getting acquainted with all of these variants. You'll get familiar with the category icons as you go, and I suggest we plunge right in. So if you'll make a new white canvas, that's a comfortable size to fill your screen at about 100%, let's just get in there and scribble. I suggest you try a number of strokes with each variant, and you don't have to stick with one color, but do stick with a range of colors that's limited. I was using blue and green. I'll do the same here. That way you'll have a little bit better chance of creating something that has an interesting look to it and isn't just totally all over the place. These strokes are made with the Van Gogh brush. There is a variation from stroke to stroke, and each stroke has a series of parallel strokes that have slight variations in color. Let's use the pointed stump to smear a little bit. And let's try waxy crayon. We know that waxy crayon is going to be a dark stroke and it'll be darker as you go over and over it or over other colors. I think I'd like to smear that a little bit. So I'm experimenting, I'm exploring, I'm just wanting to fill this page with a variety of strokes made from combinations of these variants. And sometimes you will need to make a variety of strokes and practice combining strokes in different ways in order to really understand the capability of a given variant. Here's Coarse Mop Brush, which is from the Digital Watercolor category. You'll see later on that there's more than one watercolor category in Painter, but this one will suffice for this exercise. So we're filling the page. Let's move to a different blue here, maybe a really bright blue. And I'll go to the gel coarse brush. Gel indicating that it's transparent. And that is a term that we'll see again in another context. Fine bristle is a gouache brush. Now gouache refers to a category of brushes that has white added to it and therefore is opaque. So as you would expect, you'll be able to cover underlying colors and strokes with this gouache brush. Let's go to wet oily impasto and I'll change to another color here, maybe a dark green. Wet oily impasto, what happens with this is it runs out of paint as you go. Here's a felt marker, that's gonna be a dark color. Even if we have a very pale green, that's going to start at a certain level of green and then it's going to continue to build up into darker and darker tones. Here's the real clumpy broad bristle brush from the oils category. And we'll stick with that light green. I know it's going to be an interesting brush and it is. It has a very interesting smeary quality to it. It's picking up colors underlying. Let's just prove that. I'm going to turn this to a bright blue. And when I drag over a green, it's going to give me some of that green. If I drag out here in white, I can see what it does without combining with another color. This, by the way, feels like a very slow acting brush. And I think that might be because it's very complex and also because I'm using the enhanced ghost brush as my cursor icon. I'm going to test that by going back to Preferences and Interface and changing to Brush Ghost instead of the Enhanced Brush Ghost. And now making strokes with that same variant, I see that it works much more quickly. So there is a good example of how it might be to your advantage to use the Brush Ghost rather than the Enhanced Brush Ghost. 
So we continue. Let's use the square grainy pastel from the pastels group, and I'll change to a nice teal blue here. And we will, of course, see grainy paper texture is showing up. The Real 6B Soft Pencil. I'm going to a very dark blue now. Recall that this is a pencil that will respond to a tilt in your stylus. Even though we're not seeing the tilt because we're not looking at the enhanced brush ghost, I know that I can make that happen simply by the way that I grip my stylus. Dry ink may look familiar from an earlier lesson. Here we go with dry ink. It's opaque and covers what's underneath. Let's use wet bristle from the real wet oil group, and I'll make a stroke out here. That's a very interesting looking stroke, and I'll try another one out this way. So this is yet another attempt at creating a painting by basically doing a sampler of all of the items in this particular custom palette, and I invite you to do the same.